Hi, my name is Carlos Riccio. I'm the founder of Diversion Zero Waste. We are a waste production and diversion company based in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, we've been in business for almost five years now and uh, looking forward to growing and getting more productions um, and using our services. It's a long story because uh, I've been in the industry for almost 20 years now. I started very, very young. Uh, I started literally with a sledgehammer in my hand and the construction coordinator said, hey, go into the back lots of Vancouver Film Studios and smash apart these sets, uh, which I proceeded to do for weeks upon weeks. Um, and a lot of people in the industry will know that set construction is a massive part of the industry. and. It's also a part of the industry that's often overlooked because it's pre and post. And so during my career in film, I realized just how much waste there is. The, the amount of waste that's being produced on an average TV show or feature is absolutely staggering. And it's something that we don't take into consideration because we just don't even, it's before, it's after, we don't even think about it really. Um, but. I started Diversion Zero Waste after realizing um, from a family friend, actually, just how bad wood is in landfill. So when wood is in landfill, it actually produces methane, which is 25 times worse for the environment, for the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. And so what I realized he was doing was he was breaking it down and turning it into a biofuel um, for concrete kilns. And what that does is it actually offsets the use of coal and offsets the use of the, the, the methane being released into atmosphere. And so the problem that I saw in our industry was that what we were doing is we were essentially putting everything into a giant box. Like imagine you had a giant garbage can in front of your house, you threw your plastic, your paper, your wood, everything in there. And because it was contaminated, it was all garbage. Hence what we did in the recycling world is we separated everything accordingly and everything went to its own place to be reused accordingly. In the film industry, it's very difficult to do that. We've got time pressures, we've got, you know, just in the institutional ways of operating. And so to break that was really difficult, but I saw an opportunity because majority of the sets in Vancouver are made of wood. And so what I did is I actually ended up developing a proprietary bin that has a divider in it. So essentially the construction crews are diverting it on site so there would be three quarters would become wood a quarter would become garbage the wood gets processed into gets broken down and grinded up and used as a biofuel and then the garbage goes to the landfill and so it was a bit of a trial and error to get this system up and running but over time you know we worked on all the kinks we have the divider in one direction we have the divider in this direction we work with the construction crews to make it work to make the divider bigger and smaller and we've come up with a with a with a system now that really works. Um, and as an example, and I gotta give a huge shout out to Netflix because they are honestly so supportive and they pushed this through. But on the last show that we did with Netflix, just so you see some of the numbers, there was 419 tons of garbage that left that show. So the whole entire show, 419 tons. We diverted 191 tons of wood waste from landfill. I mean, that's the equivalent of probably a couple Olympic sized swimming pools. And that carbon offset, based off of our carbon calculator that we developed with a um, sustainable engineering company, actually in Vancouver, is roughly 790 tons of carbon dioxide diverted from atmosphere, which is the equivalent of almost 1,200 return flights from Vancouver to LAX. So the impact is massive. Um, and it's really important that all shows are doing this and they're all mandated to do this um, because the impact that we can have on this is far superior than most other things that we're doing currently uh, in the industry. But I think for most of the most part right now, it's just getting people to buy into the idea that this should be the norm. We cannot have a giant bin being filled with garbage, go you know, potentially biofuel and garbage, hence completely contaminated. So it's definitely a personal thing. And I think that needs to come from the top down. Um, and like I said, Netflix was good about making those mandates. 
um, on on the, their one of the last shows, and so it definitely is a an uh, up or down mentality that we need to get everybody involved in. Yeah, they're they're definitely in the industry. It's interesting. It's run by a few big players uh, who've been operating the same way for since the industry started, and. Uh, they built relationships with some of the larger studios that basically have made it proprietary that only their services can be used in that studio. And that's been a big hurdle because, you know, we don't have the, the same deep pockets. And also we're doing like completely structural changes to the industry. Um, so it's been difficult like that. And I, I feel the studios need to be more supportive of companies that like myself who are trying to get out and trying to get their feet underneath them. Um, because a lot of the hurdles that I had was just getting into the studios, like being allowed to be on the lot. Um, and I, that, you know, a huge shout out to Bridge Studios. Bridge Studios is probably one of the most progressive um, organized studios I've ever worked with. Um, they, you know, they don't micromanage you and they allow you to basically do the right thing. Um, and Vancouver Film Studios also is very, very progressive and nothing but respect for them. And, you know, um, but definitely some of the other studios are really difficult to get in on. Um, so that's one thing. And in terms of an organizational perspective, you know, we're, we're just trying to sort of change the mentality of how we deal with demoing sets. Um, and we're trying to promote that. So from our perspective at this point, it's not so much of a diversity thing for us. It's more of just getting out there and making our service be known and trying to get people to buy into it. I think the trends of the future are, it's gonna be, I mean, the industry is so fluid, right? It, 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 every show comes in, nothing is consistent. Uh, so it's tough because you can shoot a show from that's based in the future in 2050, and then the next in the next month you're shooting a show from 1950. So the crossover is different, very difficult. I think the future is definitely having a baseline that if something is being demoed, because there is a ton of waste in the industry, that it's being done, taking into consideration all the different factors that need to be in terms of how to separate things. And I do think we're using things is going to be also a big part. I think there needs to be a simpler system involved where where set pieces can come in and out where there isn't as much handling of it from a show perspective. Um, but I do think the future would be, and I hope in Vancouver that the future really is, is that the likes of Amazon, Netflix, Apple, NBC, actually set up legitimate studios and shops where they're actually permanent establishments so that they can stop, you know, in the construction world, we start a show, we build a shop, we shoot the show, we smash the sets, we store some sets, we take apart the shop, we go again, same studio. And so if there was standard, like, like fully permanent sit, like structures in Vancouver from a lot of the major studios, that would be able to reduce our carbon footprint immensely because we could take set pieces from one show, have a, have a storage facility that's full time. And then in a year from now, when we're on the next show, we could take those set pieces and use it on the next show and everything would be categorized. So the future, there's a lot of potential, but these are all lofty ideas because from a financial perspective, I appreciate why the studios don't uh, have, you know, you know, brick and mortar spaces here, but you know, we can always dream. I think the call to action is that we do have ways to reduce our carbon footprint in the industry. Uh, I think we start just need to have like collectively across all departments start putting these into place. And so my call to action is that at least on the construction side of the world that we actually divert and separate all of our set and demo waste accordingly and reuse everything we can because the impact is massive. Like I said, the last show is we saved 780 tons of carbon from the atmosphere. It's 1,200 return flights from LA. It's ridiculous. Like it can be done. If we hadn't have done this, it would be in the atmosphere and we will be well worth, worse off for it. 
I think the fact that these kind of conferences are just happening and people are having a conversation is key. I don't know about the other departments, but I know in the construction department, what we do and what we what we can do, um, it's big. Thank you very much for organizing. I think you guys are, you know, you're also the tip of the spear. So thank you.